In Creole Parametric, you can use a bearing mechanism connection to have one translational and three rotational degrees of freedom. Now, I'll be honest, I have trouble thinking of a real world situation for this. I have to take another look at the 507 mechanical movements. I made up an example to show you, but again, I'm not sure of a real world use case for this. Okay, anyhow, here I am in an assembly. It's got one component. It's got this slot in here that I am going to use. Let me change from a shaded mode to no hidden line. Inside of the component that I'm going to place the other component in, I have a horizontal axis that I'll use for the translational degree of freedom. And I do have another vertical axis, this one over here, that I'm going to use to control the cone angle of the component that will be assembled with the bearing. All right, let me go back to my shading with edges display. Let's click on the assemble button and I'm going to locate the component that I'm going to assemble. Let's just drop it on the screen over here and I'm gonna display it in its own separate window to point out a couple things about this part. You will need to have a point in the part and that's going to be assembled to either a straight edge or an axis or a straight curve in the model and so to pick the point let's go ahead and grab that by the way if i were trying to pick the point here in the graphics area sometimes your 3d dragger can get in the way so you can turn it off using this button on the dashboard and then that should make it well maybe i only have to cheat a little bit more and use my selection filter to make sure i can only select points all right so we have the point selected let me open up the placement tab. The assembly reference again is either going to be a datum axis or a curve or an edge. Once again, I will cheat and use my selection filter to control what I'm capable of picking. And oops, I forgot to change to what I wanted this to be. Let's change this to a bearing connection. And now let's select the point over here. That's why it's much easier to pick now. Uh, and then select the axis that it's going to be assembled to. And so now we have the point alignment in the bearing connection. You can also define some joint axis settings. So for example, if I go to translation, you can set a zero reference for the assembly. And what's interesting about this is normally when you do a joint axis setting, you're going to pick an entity from both the assembly and the component but for a bearing connection it only requires a reference from the assembly i'm going to turn on my datum plane visibility so i can select a datum plane over here and right now it's got some distance between there let's change this to zero i'm going to, going to enable this as the regeneration value and let's set in some limits I happen to know based on the geometry of this one, I want it to go from a minimum value of negative 4.5 to a maximum value of 4.5 within there. So that's good for my settings in here. The other setting that you can control is the cone axis. And for the cone axis, that is for the three rotational degrees of freedom. And this one, you'll notice, we have to pick references in both the component and the assembly. So I will pick this axis over here, helps displaying it in its own separate window. Might be hard for me to pick the corresponding axis in the main window, so I'm gonna turn off the display of the component in the main window. Now it's a lot easier for me to pick the axis for reference, and by default, it is 180 degrees cone opening angle, which means it's full rotation about your X, Y, and Z axes in here. I want to limit this. I happen to know based on the size over here, really should only be about 20 degrees. And here you can see the cone that it's allowed to rotate through. If you wanted it on the other side, you could click on the flip button. But this is actually what I want for the cone opening angle. So all of this is good inside of here. Let's hit the check mark. And now let me turn off some of my datums. 
I can test the motion, but one thing is it's hard to get it back to being perfectly vertical once I start dragging it. So I am going to click on the drag components dialog box. And while I'm here, I'm going to create a snapshot in case I want to use that later on. And I can rename it. And so that way, right from the get-go, I've got something where it is in the middle of the slot and it is vertical. Now when I'm inside this dialog box, I can grab this over here and I can test the motion. And you can see the limits of the joint axis settings might be a little too big based on the rotation angle that I'm using. But again, you can see how I can move it through here and it's got the translational degree of freedom and the three rotational degrees of freedom. Where I think this would make more sense is if you could use a curved curve for example if you had actual ball bearings inside of a race in a bearing hey you know that i could see some use for but again i think i recall some mechanical movements in the 507 book where you have something assembled along here and then a linkage over on the other side where it might need to rotate around the three rotational degrees of freedom all right, so that's how you can set it up. Let me close out of here. Another thing that I want to show you on the mechanism side, I will click on applications and then mechanism. If we expand the connections in the mechanism tree, that can allow me to get to the actual joints inside of here. If I click on the translational axis, You'll notice that I am capable of creating a motor on the axis and I can configure it however which way that I want. Maybe I'm going to specify that this is going to be half an inch per second velocity and hit the check mark in there. So I can create a motor on the translational axis, but if I select the cone axis, you'll notice that I only have the choice to edit definition or zoom to selected. You cannot create a motor on the cone axis. So that's another thing to consider if you are using bearing connections inside of your model. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.